so thanks very much for joining us. Uh, we're going to go through uh, some of the components of Microsoft Viva today uh, and talk about the uh, employee experience and how we can uh, work towards a better experience for your user base. Um, the run of order for today was we'll just cover off who you're actually talking to. Um, we will look at uh, the four modules that make up Viva. Uh, we'll then go into a connections demo. Uh, we'll then talk about the, the various things that you can do after this conversation uh, to move yourself that bit closer to deploying Viva, and then we'll open up for Q&A at the end. Uh, I'm joined today by uh, Kritzia and Sam from Microsoft. Um, they will be available throughout the webinar. Uh, Sam will be delivering the connections uh, demo. Um, so if you have any questions that you want to discuss uh, as we go through this, pop them into the uh, into the chat, into the Q&A, and we will address those at the end. Um, for those of you who don't know, who modality are. There's a whole bunch of reasons on screen as to uh, why you should uh, <laughs> should be uh, trusting what we're we're guiding you towards and telling you. Uh, I mean, we have a number of certifications. We have a number of Partner of the Year awards. Uh, we have a good number of certified people, and we have the advanced specialisations, which prove that we've done uh, what we say we can do. Uh, if you really want more information on it, there is a URL at the bottom. Um, and that will give you a, a greater breakdown of, uh, of where we've come from, what our history is and what our heritage uh, in this arena is. But if we start the actual conversation uh, for Viva around uh, stealing a quote that's actually in one of the Microsoft uh, official decks, uh, and I particularly like it because I think it sums up very nicely what Viva is all about. Uh, it's the idea of connecting people to content and content to people uh, through Microsoft 365. And that's really what we're trying to do here is we're taking information and resources and matching it up to people who need to know or have an interest in that particular area. We want to make it so that you're not uh, going outside of your particular work arena, your work tools, to have to go and find additional information. Um, and that works in in, uh, in two ways. So in the sharing of information and the receiving of information. So we'll go on to that in a minute. But fundamentally, yes, Viva is about connecting people to content and content to people. If we look at the four main modules of Viva, or oh, sorry, the four modules of Viva. Of Viva. Um, they're listed there on the screen. Uh, we're bringing the communications, the insights, the knowledge and the learning all together. Communications at a high level is really about taking your, your news feed, your communications from your organisations or from other people in your organisation um, and resources that are available and tailoring those to individuals or or particular role types and so if you have interests in particular areas or if you work in particular functions or you want to know about certain areas of your business to keep on top of what's happening with i don't know bids or contracts or something like that you can specify what's important to you so we make sure the information comes to you that's relevant to you or that's going to be of interest to you Insights is uh, a combination of, of bringing workplace analytics and, and my analytics. Um, and we're providing those pieces of information at an individual layer, at a management layer, and then at a business leadership layer. So it will vary different uh, for, for each of those three groups. Uh, and again, when we're talking about this kind of thing, we are talking about people are only going to be able to see what they're allowed to see. So your corporate secrets are not going to be shared amongst your, your user base randomly. This is only specific stuff that people are allowed to see. We then have topics, um, which is where we're using uh, AI, artificial intelligence, to um, identify where you have knowledge and resources and documentation 
and also the people who know about these things uh, and we're organizing them uh, into what's referred to as shared topics and we'll come on to that again as we move through the slide deck uh, and then you have learning and the learning piece it's re really regardless of whether it's informal or formal learning um, we're pulling together into your way of working um, training material uh, from the likes of uh, Microsoft Learn or maybe LinkedIn Learning. It could be from an LMS or learning management solution uh, or a third party or, or, or indeed your own content. But we're bringing learning into the organization, into your daily routine. So it's not something that becomes an unusual activity where you take two or three days out. We want you to learn as you go through your working world. So very quickly on to each of those. Uh, the connections piece, which is what we're going to look at today, uh, brings together information from the likes of SharePoint, uh, Yammer uh, and Stream. Um, and you have a, a dashboard available so that we can look at things like um, uh, company news or releases about what's happening in the business or maybe competitive information, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, and you can have uh, you know, reminders or actions to follow things up. It's a great way to share and get users to really feel engaged in the business because that's what we really want to, especially with you know uh, the increase in remote working. We want people to feel engaged in the business. We want people to feel involved in the business. So rather than having uh, your information sat on some intranet that people might uh, might not look at, we want to bring it into uh, a, a regular habitual piece of the working world. With Viva Insights, um, we are looking around productivity and well-being. So we're going to make uh, recommendations or tools are going to make recommendations which are appropriate for that user. And the reason we want to do this is we want to make it um, a more productive and a more balanced environment. We want people to work smarter, not necessarily harder. Um, and when we talked about it on the previous slides, we talked about three areas. We have personal uh, insights, and some of you will be aware of this already, where you've got focus time. Um, you might want to uh, uh, look at having time for coaching or, or, or learning. Um, you might want to make sure that people have sufficient amount of breaks um and we can also look at whether or not we actually want to introduce things like uh wrap up time after meetings or virtual commutes or maybe um some meditation apps uh, such as as headspace from a manager viewpoint uh we're looking at the balance between productivity and well-being and really what we want to do here is try and identify and minimize the risk of teams becoming burnt out. Uh, so we will make recommendations around uh, what we can do to help employees keep a, a healthy balance uh, between the way they work. Because uh, obviously, you know, if they're not run down, they're going to be more productive, they're going to be more on the ball. And then uh, at an organization level for business leaders, uh, we're looking at a broad visibility uh, about what is happening so that we can improve the employee experience and also prove the business outcomes. So we're tying all of these pieces of information together to make sure that you've got a, a workforce that is uh, fit for purpose. When we move on to Viva Topics, this one I think is, is, is really quite interesting. Um, this is the one that is going to pull together the uh, knowledge, the resources and the experts uh, automatically. So what we're going to do is identify particular topics. Uh, we're going to look about who knows about those topics. We're going to look at the documentation we've got about those or articles that we have. Uh, and we're going to bring together the people, the, the places and the content automatically. Those automatic uh, collections are going to be pulled together. The experts can then edit them and approve them to make sure it's all going to be uh, absolutely right and there's no mistakes in there. Uh, but the idea is you're not going somewhere else to learn this information. 
this is coming to you within the natural flow of your work. So whether you're in Teams, if you're in Office, whatever it may be, an example might be if you're using an internal project name or uh, or maybe you've got acronyms that refer to your business. If you hover over those project names or, or, or acronyms, you will get an immersive card that pops up saying, actually, this is project ABC. It refers to, um, you know, one of the, uh, the, 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 the the clients that we're working on on a particular topic that can't be shared externally. Um, and then you can drill into that card and it will provide you more information. So you're not having to go somewhere else to find out what things mean. Again, it's all privacy protected. You're not going to see anything that uh, isn't uh, you're not allowed to see. Um, but it is about bringing all of those resources and those people together. And if you've got a question about that topic, you can fire that in and the people with the expertise will be able to answer that for you. So I think that's a real uh, exciting one. Uh, and then the last one we have is the learning piece. Um, and we know that learning is is quite often under prioritized. Everybody's very busy um, and quite often you have to take time out to go and learn whatever it is that you're looking for. We want to make learning a natural part of your day. Um, and so the learning module is uh, really you have a, a my learning view, uh, you have assigned content, you have content that is of interest to you. And as I said before, that can come from your own content. Uh, it could be from a learning management system that you have already. Uh, it could be from something like Microsoft Learn or LinkedIn, or maybe a third party provider. But you can have content assigned via a manager. I'm sorry, your manager could assign content to you um, or you can set, you know, target completion dates, statistics, how people are getting on with it, the progress, etc. But it's bringing that learning experience into Teams. So all four of these modules bring these components into your working world. So it's about blending everything into a natural user experience. So you have the information you want, you have access to the knowledge you need, you have access to the training that's going to be relevant to your work life. Um, and really to make sure that when you've got that, you're then in a productive and a, uh, a balanced uh, environment. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an overview. Um, we're not going to do huge amounts of PowerPoint today. Uh, we figure that the most powerful way for you to see things is to actually look at it. So I'm going to hand over to uh, Sam now, who's going to run the demo on connections, uh, and then we should pick that up again uh, afterwards. Thanks, Pete. Brilliant. So first up today, we're going to talk about a couple of things around Viva connections. And I'm going to cover eight main pieces today. So we're going to walk through the end user experience and give you a good overview of how Viva looks inside Teams. I'm going to show you some of the new features for Viva Connections and how it looks on mobile. And that includes the new adaptive cards. So how you can integrate those with other services. I'm going to walk through the prerequisites uh, to sort of discover what you need to prepare with SharePoint with some of the Teams features. I'm going to show you how to enable the app, so where it's located, how to deploy it to end users and how to set up a pilot. We're going to walk through a couple of best practices, so what to look for in a modern SharePoint intranet, SharePoint online, by the way, not SharePoint on premise. And also walk through the global navigation and the app bar for SharePoint. I'll also show you some of the features relating to a home site and then finally how to target certain functionality and parts of the page to specific people, which is audience targeting. So I'm going to start sharing my screen and then we'll kick off with what it looks like today. So essentially the main dashboard for your intranet is a new app inside team called connections and this is a new teams app which will be available in your admin center today so what this is doing is it's essentially bringing together a sharepoint modern intranet 
into Teams. And then this application becomes the front door for everything in SharePoint. So this one application will then allow an end user to access any part of SharePoint. So if you've got an IT SharePoint site, a HR SharePoint site, maybe you've got a learning SharePoint site, a project site, everything then will be accessible through the Connections app. So first and foremost, it's your internet and it's a branded customized employee app for Teams. So you can see here, I'm inside my Teams app and on the left hand side, I've got the Connections app open. So this looks and feels like a normal SharePoint page. So I've got my news, my announcements at the top. I have a dashboard on the right hand side, which is my Viva Connections dashboard. And these are adaptive cards. So when we talk about adaptive cards, what we're saying here is, is that I can actually interact with this card. So for example, this is for the French food court. And for example, I could say, I want steak today. How would I like it prepared? And I can submit that. So this could be going back to APIs that you hook into on a third party system. And we've got quite a few players that we've partnered with to provide access for adaptive cards within Viva Connections. And these adaptive cards could have lots of different functionality, like it could be to do with a business trip. So maybe you have a expenses system and people have to raise travel requests. So this could pop up and say, hey, we see you've just booked a flight here. Make sure you submit your expenses. So it could also help remind people around the workflow that you have the desire to fulfill. And that's how Viva Connections will integrate with these different other partner. So you can surface information on the adaptive card. You can create a workflow behind it so people can provide answers. They can ask questions or it could just surface information from that platform. So that's a travel one. You could have um, an event one. So maybe this hooks into an event system and shows people information about up and coming events. You could have ones relating to projects. So anything that could be built into an adaptive card is surfaced on your intranet and that's all inside Teams. So I haven't had to leave the Teams client to go to a browser, type in the internet page to go to the internet. It's easily accessible, one click, single sign on straight to your SharePoint modern intranet. So what I'll do in a moment is I'll show you how you create an adaptive card and, and some of the functionality and, and features behind it. What we'll also show you is the new feed for Viva Connections. So the idea behind the feed is that anything that user has access to, because it's all security trimmed. So if I'm a member of a specific Yammer community, for example, it could show me the most active questions or the most active announcements that are part of that Yammer community. And then it can surface the Yammer content inside the feed. It will also update with any news or announcements from other, other SharePoint sites. So if you have a HR site that you've got news and announcements on, you could also have those pop up as part of the Viva Connections feed and you can boost SharePoint news to appear in the feed. So if I cycle through my Viva Connections feed, you'll see I get different news in different places coming up as part of this piece, but I also get conversations from Yammer. So it's a way to keep people up to date and make sure that your employees have everything at their fingertips without leaving the application. So I'm still inside connections. I haven't clicked anywhere yet. and I've got all this information in one place. The same web parts work from a SharePoint intranet page. So Viva Connections is still servicing the same web parts. So here I've got a Twitter feed. Here I've got a Yammer feed from a conversation and I can start a new discussion or I can react within connections or comment without leaving connections. And then down the bottom, I've got some other common things that 
SharePoint embeds like documents, other shortcuts to different pages, news from different places. So that's what Viva Connections is. It's the front door to a modern SharePoint intranet. So from here, if I wanted to navigate to a different part of SharePoint, this is called the global navigation. And essentially this brings together a navigation across SharePoint into Teams. The benefit of having it here is if I then jump to my leadership connection page, I don't have to leave the Teams app to navigate to a different page or a different site collection within SharePoint. Or I could go to my HR website. I could go to my learning platform. And I'm still inside Viva Connections. So you can see how this Viva Connections app is becoming the front door for any SharePoint site then. And that's part of this new global navigation integration into the app. So how I bring that up is I just click on Viva Connections while I've got it open and then that navigation appears. And it will also show other sites that you favorited and news from different places as well. So that's the main end user experience for it. If I wanted to look at my tiles, my adaptive cards for my dashboard, the Viva Connections dashboard is these adaptive cards which essentially plug into different places. It could be a Teams channel, it could be a Yammer community, it could be another website. So they can be URLs that point to different places or it could be a integrated API that plugs into an expenses system, for example, and reminds people about submitting their expenses. So it's quite flexible in what you can customize and how they look. The cool thing is that if I was to edit this page, I can also preview how this looks on a mobile device, how it looks on a tablet and how it look on desktop. So this gives you some free design functionality to drag and drop different cards into a different place and also target cards to a specific audience. So if this is my French canteen information, at the bottom with audience targeting, I can say, OK, this is targeted to the French group. And then this one is targeted to the UK group. So what happens here is if I'm a member of a specific group, I'll have a different experience when I view the Viva Connections dashboard. And if I click on preview at the top, I can actually preview it as a different audience. If I then preview it as a French group user, I get the French option, UK, I get the UK option. So you can see here how if you've got frontline workers, if you've got different business units, if you have people in different countries or different regions, different geography, they're all accessing the same intranet. They're all accessing the same Viva Connections dashboard, but with audience targeting, different groups of people actually have different visible information surfaced to them inside the app. So that's an important part of the audience targeting is making sure that people have the right information relevant to their role, their location, their business unit. And that audience targeting is available across all other parts of SharePoint. So for example, if I wanted to edit my menu, the menu can also be targeted to a specific audience. So I could be a French user accessing the French intranet and then I get a different menu to a UK user. I get a different web part, different layout, different Viva Connections dashboard. So when you're thinking about the planning side and the design side of the intranet, if you segregate that into different groups, then you'll be able to have a specific audience targeted with different menu content and resources. So if I look at my dashboard of cards, the way that these work are all based on a JSON template. And 
at the top here, I can say where my icon is going to come through and the layout and how it looks from a card. I can make it a small card or a large card. And then down here we have a JSON template, which is telling the Viva Connections dashboard what the layout is. Is there a button? What does the button do? Is it interactive? Does it surface information from a API that connects with a different resource? And these can be easily replicated then using the Adaptive Cards Designer on the Microsoft Adaptive Cards.io site. So essentially I copy and paste my template and my data into the bottom and then anything that I design on here, I then copy and paste back into connections and then that card is updated with that new JSON. And there's also a whole bunch of templates available from the template page. So you'll see a couple here that I've um, shown you today, like a flight one. There's the canteen one. Um, there's different ones for weather, stock price. There's the um, agenda one. So this will give you a good sample place to use some templates. There's also a lot of other resources around the SharePoint SPFX engine that allows you a lot of flexibility over the layout, customization, the design, and then essentially that card that you've fully customized is then replicated into your dashboard from this JSON template. And all of these, I could copy and paste these back into the adaptive cards designer to make and create anything I want to then. So it's a really cool way to preview how it looks, happy with everything, and then you can essentially customize whatever you need to, target the audience, and then go live. So the adaptive cards are very flexible, fully integrated with all of our partner providers, and that will give you those um, API driven integration pieces from those adaptive cards. So you do need a SharePoint modern intranet. I keep saying modern because SharePoint has two flavors, modern and classic. Viva Connections doesn't work with a classic SharePoint intranet. It has to be a modern SharePoint intranet for Viva Connections. So you can modernize a SharePoint site from classic to modern, and you can make sure that your web parts and other customizations work with, with modern. We have a validation tool that you can run on classic sites to make them modern. And then once you have a modern SharePoint intranet, you can essentially bring that up to Viva Connections by making it a home site. So when you enable a home site in a tenant, you're essentially saying that that, that one site is now the home site for everyone inside your organization. And what that means is when you have the home site set, you can enable the global navigation feature. So you can only have one home site per tenant and the home site is the main hub that everyone lands on. So for example, me, it's the landing. So once a home site is set on the home site, you'll have a new option at the top called global navigation. And this is the SharePoint navigation bar across any SharePoint site. So if I'm on a HR page, if I'm on a project site, if I'm on the IT SharePoint site. I'll then have the app bar appear down the left hand side here. And this is the Viva Connections menu. So if I jump into Viva Connections again on Teams, this is the menu. So I'm looking at the navigation here, my sites and news. And then here I'm looking at navigation, my sites and news. So that's the first main prerequisite for Viva Connections is set your internet as a home site and then enable global navigation. So once global navigation is enabled, I can brand it with a logo and give it a title. So you'll see here, there's my title, there's my logo. And then down here, I want to set it as hub or global navigation and then edit it. So when I edit it, it's the same as other navigation menus inside SharePoint. 
which also means I can target it to a specific audience. So the menu on the SharePoint site can be targeted, the global navigation menu can be targeted, and the hub site collection menu can be targeted. So anything that's relating to that group then gives them a customized experience based on their job role, frontline worker, it could be based on geography, business unit, and then everything is then seen for that user, customized for their specific group. So that's how to think about global navigation. It's essentially a navigation pane that allows you easy access to other SharePoint resources. And that's how that part works from Fever Collections that allows me to jump between different SharePoint sites. So that's the main prerequisite. SharePoint Modern, Home Site, Global Navigation. So once you've got those configured, you just need to enable the Viva Connections app inside Teams. And because we're Microsoft, we like making things complicated by having two different flavors of Viva Connections. We have at the moment a third party way of doing it, what we're calling a Viva Connections custom app that you have to create inside PowerShell. And then currently in preview is our first party app, which is Viva Connections app natively inside the Teams Admin Center. So what I mean by that is this is one I've created with PowerShell. And you'll see here that it's a custom app created by me, the publisher. And then this is the new preview app that we've just released to everyone's tenant globally, but it is currently in public preview. So although it's there, it's still with the banner that it's subject to change and it's in public preview. The difference here is the one that I've created with PowerShell, I have to manually add a logo, run a PowerShell script. I have to have a 32 by 32 icon. I then have to have a bigger 192 by 192 icon. It's a little bit onerous on the IT Pro to create. It takes about 20 minutes to wrap it. Um, sorry, the custom map, this one. Or you can use the one that's inside Teams natively um, that will be going GA in the next month or two. So essentially you've got two ways to do it at the moment, one with PowerShell and one natively inside the Teams Admin Center. They both have identical functionality, but essentially the first party one, the one that's published by Microsoft and the one that's called Viva Connections will be going GA very soon. So once you've got your app set up, you can then target it to specific people. So in a test tenant, I've just added it to my global policy, but essentially you could add it to a test IT policy and then deploy it to your pilot users. So then 50 people have a app set up policy. And then those 50 people, for example, would then have the app automatically appear inside Teams. So just like any other Teams app, you just use a Teams app set up policy, deploy it, and then that's your pilot underway. So that's the start of essentially adding to Teams. And then from a setup perspective, once we have it available inside Teams, we can still customize, configure and manage the intranet page from SharePoint. So any of the administration that's done from the SharePoint side will be live in connections the moment it's published inside SharePoint. Because it's essentially the front door for that intranet, the moment that you have a edit that's published on SharePoint, it's live in Viva Connections. So the two are one in the same. It's just a, a browser rendered access for the SharePoint page. And that's the way to think about it is that essentially Viva Connections is showing you that SharePoint home site, and that's what its functionality is. So anything that's changed on here is instantly seen in the Viva Connections application. I think that was the first part on what it is, how it works, and global navigation, app bar, 
home site. Uh, then the audience targeting piece we've covered mostly around um, the targeting of menus and the targeting of information. And what we're trying to do is essentially make sure that people have the right information at the fingertips. So what you can also do, if you see here, I have specific news from different regions. You can tag certain pages to be targeted to a specific audience. So if I had separate business units, separate geography, I can also ensure that pages are protected with audience targeting as well. When I say protected, I suppose I mean targeted because they're on the SharePoint site and then only certain people will have access to view them. And then if I had a UK new site. So underneath that, those SharePoint pages can also be targeted to a specific audience and modality will be able to work through that with you to essentially make sure that the content, the layout, the menus, everything then is audience targeted. And then from a Viva connections perspective, all of the adaptive dashboard cards can also be targeted to a specific audience as well. So it's the same intranet, the same connections app and the same Viva Connections dashboard, but each individual has a different experience when they access those different resources because of the group that they're a member of. And that's how you can distinguish between different parts of the intranet and Viva Connections as well. Perfect. I think I'm bang on time then because that should be about the uh, the main 20 minutes. Perfect. Looks good. Back to you, Pete. Lovely. Uh, thanks, Sam. Uh, let me just go back to my screen. Uh, while you're uh, <coughs> while you're listening into the last bit, Sam, uh, maybe you want to uh, have a look at the questions. Um, great. OK, so hopefully that's shown you a little bit about what's really involved uh, from the connections side. Um, the roadmap and timeline, I think, is uh, fairly well uh, established. Um, really, we're at the uh, the Q4 autumn area, uh, so we have items coming out um, into uh, into GA, especially for the, the mobile side of connections, which is what Sam's just uh, looked at. Um, so this again, this will be made available to you uh, afterwards. Um, one of the uh, main things that we really wanted to sort of talk about is is what do you do next? Um, there are a number of Microsoft workshops uh, which. Uh, we can execute for you. Um, those are listed up on the on the top part of the screen. All of those contain uh, some Viva content, uh, some more than others. Obviously, the top one being the primary one. Um, and then in addition to that, uh, we are running uh, a readiness and implementation uh, offering, which is really where Sam has gone through and uh, covered off uh, the requirements from your modern SharePoint site, etc. Um, then we want to make sure that you have everything in place uh, because fundamentally, I think it's you know it, it, it's quite clear from from what Sam was showing that if the information in your uh, your SharePoint, uh, your modern SharePoint site is is not up to scratch, not in the right place, not uh, categorized or um, uh, or organised correctly, then that's going to feed through into Viva. So we want to make sure that everything is lined up so that when it does get enabled, um, it's presented in the way that we would expect it to be presented. Um, if you're not interested in, in the workshops yet, uh, then feel free to get in touch with us and we can arrange just a conversation with somebody from pre-sales to talk you through what might be uh, the next appropriate step or even just to sound out how it might be used within your organisation. Uh, from there, the licensing, um, we have 
Uh, obviously, connections is uh, no additional cost for 365 customers who have SharePoint. Um, and then really the, the pricing model is, is, is really quite simplistic. Uh, it's roughly three pounds uh, per user per month uh, for each of the models. Um, and depending on which one you want to take and, and which order, of course, you want to do things in. Um, so from that side, we're really sort of getting to the end of this. I can see some questions coming in. Um, and Sam is replying to one at the moment. But why? what are the real benefits of it? We want to hit that user experience. We want that engagement level. We want people to, you know, to, to, to share information and think out loud the, the days of protectionism. Um, and if I know this, somebody can't get rid of me, uh, you know, really have proven to be mostly uh, inefficient. So we want to get this collective uh, way of working uh, much more um habitual if we look at all the information that's on here yes there's information about productivity and burnout and we talked about that earlier on but i think really some of these points uh, in the middle section where we talk about 94 percent of people said that they'd be less inclined to leave when their investment is made into their learning and their growth i think that is vitally important um, and if we change away from taking, you know, days, two, three, four, five, whatever it is out of people's diaries and make learning part of the uh, the daily work process, uh, that is something that will naturally become ingrained within the organisation. But the other one on here that is, is quite interesting is that uh, Microsoft discovered through their research that if you spend an hour a day um, it's up to seven weeks a year searching for content uh, and information. Um, and that's really quite a big loss of time. So I think really, you know, there are a number of reasons why the whole Viva Suite falls together very nicely. The real benefits for your organization um, will probably be uh, common in some areas but other areas are going to be specific targeted to your organization. So um, we can look at certain things, uh, but we really do probably just need to have a conversation about what it is you want to achieve and how we can actually um, make this work within your organization. So that I believe is the end of the webinar. Uh, let's have a quick look at whether or not there are any questions left over. Uh, the session was recorded, um, so that will be made available. Uh, da, 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 da. What have we got? Oh, we've got another one come in. Um, uh, how do frontline employees without a work device, Office 365 and Teams access Viva? Uh, don't know if you're still on there, Sam. Without a work device? Mm-hmm. Yep. So the question is, how do frontline employees without a work device, Office 365 and Teams access Viva? The only way to do that would be in a, a situation in which the company allows that bring your own device situation. And then there are like some solutions to actually deploy, um, of course, through Microsoft licenses, um, identity and Teams resources without Teams access. Uh, there's no access directly to Viva itself, as it's basically embedded within the Teams hub. Great. Um, well, hopefully that has been of interest. Uh, I know we've uh, run over by a couple of minutes, um, but uh, from us, thanks very much for attending. Uh, Kritzia and Sam, it's been a pleasure as always. Um, we will get this uh, recording and slide deck uh, made available. And thank you very much.